Good morning, Austin. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. The name of your book is Steal Like an Artist. My mantra has always been, steal my art. I think the two of us can relate here. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the The idea of putting a book like this together, where, where was the original seed planted and how did it grow? You know, uh, it started out, I was 27, and someone had asked me to give a talk to some students at a university. And as you can imagine, I wasn't that much older than the students I was supposed to be talking to, so I wasn't sure what to say to them. So I went for a walk with my wife, and I asked her what I should do, and she said, well, the best talk I ever heard was a woman came to our school and told us a list of 10 things she wished she had known when she was a student. And I said, that's great. I'm going to steal that. And so I wrote this talk called How to Feel Like an Artist, um, and it was just a list of 10 things I wish I had known when I was 19. And then that was really the genesis of the book. Yeah, yeah, because you've got the 10 transforming principles that change a person's life. And Because there's a lot of people seeking right now. They just need direction. Yeah, I like to think of Steel Like an Artist as almost like a little like operating manual, you know, a, a way of... You know, I think we're all uh, inherently creative. I think we all have access to creativity as human beings. It's one of our great tools that we can use to, you know, make our life and our work better. I think we just need some tips. We need, like, an instruction manual. And that's what Steal Like an Artist is supposed to do. It's supposed to give people that little boost, people who want to bring creativity into their life and work, Give them a little start, a little guide, a little uh, beginner's uh, operating manual. But you know how creative people are, though. It's If it doesn't uh, you know, turn into something immediately, then all of a sudden we're off to the next project, off to the next project. People are forgetting to invest in the art itself and how it, how, how it really grows. Yeah, and I think that's why I've always been a huge proponent of a kind of daily practice, thinking in, not in terms of huge big projects or big gaps of time, but thinking about what you can show up and do every day, whether there's some sort of little creative practice that you can practice for, maybe it's only 15 minutes a day, but you do something small every day, and those little bits and pieces, they add up over time. And so I'm always advocating for an everyday kind of creativity that operates on a smaller, more manageable daily level, and to have the patience over time that those days will add up into something. Don't you agree that creativity is an addiction? You're always saying yes to everything, but you'll say no to yourself? <laughs> well, that's, that's a great, I, I haven't thought of that, but yeah, I think that it is fairly addicting, and I think that we say yes to the world a lot, and we don't say yes to ourselves a lot. And I think that that's why it's so important to, you know, a lot of people think that if you become, a, you know, someone who does a lot of creative work, that the world opens up in a way. And it does, but it also takes a lot of saying no to things. It's, it takes a lot of subtraction. You have to cut out some things in order to find the time um, to spend on your work. And so it is about saying yes to yourself, and it's about sacrificing a little bit so that you can get a lot uh, through your work. So many people, I call them writer-hiders, because they'll write and then they hide their stuff immediately, and then the world doesn't find it until they pass. Well, people have got to realize that, that creativity doesn't really belong to them. It belongs to the people who will receive it. Oh, that's, that's, that's really good, yes. Um, there, there are people who, you know, they, they don't... they. They do their work, but then they don't put it out into the world, and, right. and they're doing themselves a disservice, and they're doing us a disservice because we we need it. You know, we need new work, we need new voices, we need new things. Uh, I always say that there's a kind of there's a Robin Hood situation that kind of happens with artists. They they steal from the inspirations that came before them, and then they weave it into their own work, but the work isn't done until they give it to the rest of us so that we can steal from them. Well, you're spot on with that because, you know, people will always tell me, you know, that, oh, this is what you did on the radio. No, no, everything that I'm doing on the radio, I took from somebody else. I was inspired or influenced. So, I mean, that's the reason why this book is so strong with me is because I totally get it. Well, I think we all do it this way. I think a lot of people don't own up to it, you know, and that's what I want to point to is that all of the greats, anyone who ever became great at what they did, they paid attention to what came before, mm -hmm. you know, and they they brought the whole, as much of their world as they could, they brought into their work. And I, I love that paradox in the book, this idea that it's actually 
the more influence you bring into your work that makes you original. You know, there's writers who say, yeah, you know, I steal from one author, it's plagiarism. If I steal from 100 authors, it's research. <laughs> you know? And so the more you bring in from outside of yourself, the more that inside comes out, I think. And isn't that part of imposter syndrome? I think so, you know. I mean, like, when we start out, you know, everybody kind of fakes it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I love the story about Patti Smith. She says, well, how did we become artists? Like, well, we dressed up like artists. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we, we did things that we thought artists did. I mean, that's how we all get started. It's a kind of dress up, you know. Um, and sometimes it's as simple as, as having a silly hat that you put on, <laughs> you know, and now I'm in artist mode, you know. There's a little bit of self-delusion uh, that, that, that goes into it. We have to give ourselves permission to do the work that we want to do. That's like, and the only person that can do it is you. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's like Gene Simmons saying that if you don't think that it's the most, most outrageous, fun thing to do, nobody else is going to believe it. And, and they're not going to invest in it if you don't think it's awesome. Yeah, and another, uh, I think, didn't Gene Simmons play the bass in Kiss? He absolutely still does. Um, uh, yeah. So so uh, there's another bassist, Kim Gordon, mm. uh, in Sonic Youth, who says, uh, people pay to show up and watch somebody believe in themselves. <laughs> and I've always loved that. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that is so true, though, because, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, because people are tapping into that energy flow, and then you're just transferring that energy. But what do you do in those moments after you've, you've set the art free? Because, I mean, there's, you know, I, I always call it post-production blues. Yeah, I mean, that's when I fill up the well. You that's know, it. I always feel empty afterwards. Like, when, when I put the work out in the world, then it's time to recharge and that's when I become a student again, you know, and I go looking for new inspiration and influences. You know, I think about someone like David Bowie, since we're talking about music, you know, he put out one album and they go looking for the new sound, you know, the new thing that he wanted to explore. And uh, that's how I am. Once I put my new work out, you know, I go looking for the inspiration that's going to light up the new project. Yeah. So what, what is your website so listeners can go to your site and give you lots of love? So I live the same place online that I've lived for about 20 years. It's austincleon.com, and, uh, you know, that's my home base, so stop in and say hello. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Austin. I totally get the message that you're, that you're sharing with the world and will grow with you. Well, I would love to come back. Thanks so much for having me. You be brilliant today, okay, sir? You too.